This here is a viewer's dead motherboard. Or so we think. See, we actually decided to replace this in an earlier Fix or Flop episode. I eventually just got so tired of trying to troubleshoot it that I gave up and just swapped the board out for one that I assumed would work. And that did end up fixing the problem, but I've held onto this thing because I have my doubts about how broken it actually is. And thankfully, many of you uh, pointed to the possibility of this being a BIOS issue, which I'll admit I was not thinking about in that initial fix or flop video. Oftentimes you get so worked up on focusing on a particular aspect of a board or some other component that you just, you, you forget all the other things that you should be considering, uh, kind of like tunnel vision. And uh, it, it gets the best of me more often than not and I wish that uh, wish that wasn't the case, but I'm human and I do make mistakes and, and of course, you know, there are times when I just completely gloss over stuff that I shouldn't. Uh, so thank you to those in the comments who uh, brought up that idea because that's exactly what I I want to test here. I want to see if updating this board's BIOS, and the revision on here is quite old, fixes the memory problem that we were running into. Notice it says memory issue. That's, yeah. It's painter's tape, okay? Just, it's, it's okay. It comes right off, right? Super, super easy to do. There you go. You got your PCH fan. Okay. It's okay. It's, it's all right. Just chill. I really don't know how this video is going to turn out. I'm hoping we can fix it, repurpose this, but you never really know, and I think that's what's um, perhaps most enjoyable about these kinds of videos. You just don't know what you're gonna get. We don't know what the outcome's gonna be, and I'm gonna try my best to uh, make it a positive one. Are you ready? Stay with me. If you're looking for a fast and efficient way to edit videos, check out Filmora, a beginner-friendly yet powerful editing suite. Utilize advanced features like green screen keying, screen recording, masking, and keyframing, along with unique templates, stickers, and textiles. Filmora's goal is to condense and concentrate the most useful video editing tools into a seamless program for anyone on the go. You'll even find that it's professional enough for day-to-day -day work in the office. And it's very easy to get started once you've downloaded the suite, which you can do for free, by the way. Drag and drop video clips like you would any other program, trim, splice, adjust, color correct, it's all here and easy to pick up on. One of my biggest gripes with switching editing software is the relearning process. I just don't have the time to start completely over. But with Filmora, their learning curve is practically non-existent. You'll find navigating its various tools a breeze thanks to a friendly UI and healthy list of plugins, including now Boris FX and New Blue for some pretty awesome video effects. With Filmora, it's all about streamlining and speeding up the editing workflow, and that's why you you should consider it if you haven't already. Try it for free by clicking the link below. A lot of you ask what I do with boards we end up replacing, other components that we just swap out or outright upgrade. Do I give them back to the owners? Do I recycle them? Do I send them to the manufacturers to get RMA'd? made uh, Well, it kind of depends. It's totally circumstantial. In this case, I decided to hold onto this board because I have my suspicions again about how fixable this actually is. Now, occasionally we have a viewer who insists on keeping the original component, even if it's broken. Maybe he or she wants to RMA it or sell it to a friend or what have you. And that's totally his or her choice that by all means do what you want with your own hardware. Uh, but if that is the case, I'm not going to give you the replacement part that I know works, right? So in this case, I, I replaced the motherboard. That person was okay with the replacement. They said I could keep this. Uh, whether it's to run future tests on or to send to the manufacturer to get more of uh, more of an answer as to why the component isn't working. Um, I just like to have that option. And if that's taken away from me, which again, is your right as the owner, uh, then I'll just insist on keeping my own replacement parts because I like to use those for other fix or flop videos. So there's a bit of backstory to how all of that works. Occasionally I get a comment asking what we do with that hardware. Now you know. Uh, in this motherboard's case, the first thing I want to do is attempt to replicate the issue we saw in that fixer flop video where depending on which DIMM was in which slot, uh, we could get the board to post, but then other times, just by power cycling, sometimes it was that simple, the board would refuse to post. We would try different slots, different memory configurations, slot one, two, uh, in, in both channels, A and B, it was just inconsistent. We couldn't figure out the pattern, and that was why I ended up replacing it. But if it is a BIOS issue, then the only thing we would need to change at that point is the BIOS revision on the board, which would be pretty simple to do, assuming we can get the board to post, which I'm hoping we can get it with some sort of memory config. Right, so what we've got here is a makeshift platform on a motherboard box, and we've got a Ryzen 33100 in here, which I expect should work natively with the X570 uh, chipset. We've got a GT710, just so we have picture out, and a stock cooler. Uh, where's the power button on this thing? I think we just need to jump pins. It's gonna be these two. Right here. Alrighty. So we are just looking for a post. 
and right away the DRAM light is on. Amber DRAM LED. I don't think we're gonna get picture out. So right away, um, yeah, the same symptom we were running into earlier. It'll literally just sit like this right here forever, no picture to the monitor. And just so we're on the same page here, this memory kit I know works in other builds. We've already confirmed that. Actually, I confirmed it again today uh, with another system that I already have up and running in the other room. Uh, I also have uh, tested the 3100 in another build. There's no reason to suspect that that is the issue. Uh, and again, we ruled that out in the Fix Your Flop video, but just wanted you to be aware. We've made those checks and uh, we can pretty much narrow it down to the motherboard at this point. But what exactly about the motherboard? Well, we're gonna try your theory in the comments. We're gonna see if a BIOS update can fix this RAM compatibility issue. But first things first, we actually need to get the system to turn on. Uh, there's no BIOS flashback function on this board that I can see. And so that means we actually need to get into the BIOS in order to flash a new BIOS. And it looks like having just a single memory module here is gonna work. We're cycling through. Yep, there's the boot LED, so we should get a picture. There it is. So yeah, you just kind of have to keep plugging away at different slots and hope that something sticks. At this point, it's cycling. Not sure why it just powered off. Trying to get into the BIOS. Give me the BIOS, F1. There we go, okay. So we're gonna hop onto this motherboard vendor's website and see what the latest BIOS is for this board. This here is the motherboard's page, Tough Gaming X570 Plus. It's the exact model that we have here in the office. And what you'll want to do, in case you're curious about how to update your BIOS, where to find the latest BIOS revisions, you can click on the support tab. Now there's gonna be usually two different support tabs. One of them is the overall support tab for the, uh, for the page or for the vendor. And then there's gonna be a support tab specific to this product. This is the one we wanna click. Here it is, BIOS and firmware. Okie dokie. And yeah, so you can see all the different BIOS revisions here. And I'm actually curious, let's see what the current BIOS is on the board that we have. And that is version 4005. So we're gonna look for something newer than this, obviously, because whatever this version is, we suspect it's giving us the memory compatibility problem. And this was released July 22nd, 2021, according to this website. All it did was add native support for Windows 11. I'm assuming, yeah, there's no other change here. Uh, that was about a 20 megabyte file. So we need something newer than this that doesn't obviously erase support for the CPU that's currently in the rig, which I don't think that exists anyway. We do have version 4204, which was released uh, March of this year. That improves stability uh, and performance, uh, performance for the 5800X 3D, which is a new, newly released chip. Uh, and let's see, this beta version here, Mm, update AMD Agesa. So all these Agesa updates are basically gonna improve stability of the AM4 platform. Whatever CPU you have in the socket, as long as it's supported, uh, you should get better performance overall out of it because of the later Agesa update. So I'm inclined to try the beta version of 4403 just because, I mean, at this point, we kind of have no choice but to update the BIOS. I normally wouldn't recommend a beta version, but at this point, yeah, let's just, let's just go for it. So we're gonna download this file. We'll extract the contents of the folder to our desktop. We'll transfer them to a blank thumb drive. And then this step here is important. We didn't show it on the website, but typically you'll have a uh, little .exe, a little command file here that will change the uh, name of the BIOS revision so that it's compatible with the current BIOS. Let's go ahead and pull that over here. We'll just click anything to continue and you can see it's renamed the BIOS. So now the motherboard will be able to read it and update it without any issues. Back to our test rig, I don't see any option here for flashing a BIOS. So we'll just hop into advanced mode, F7, and we'll move over to the tool tab here. So you'll see the easy flash three utility. I'm assuming this is what we'll need. Yep, okay, so this here is the, uh, this is actually the root of our storage drive we attached to it. That's where we saved our BIOS revision. Uh, and we'll go ahead and select the .cap file that we renamed with the little command line. So we'll click yes. And then while this is happening, uh, selected file is not a proper BIOS. Oh, maybe it's because this is a Wi-Fi model. That's what it was. I'm an idiot. Just goes to show you, you need to be very careful about what BIOS you select. If the board hadn't run its check, we could have flashed a BIOS that's not compatible with the board and it would have essentially been bricked. If we didn't have a backup BIOS, we'd have needed to replace the BIOS chip, which is a pain in the butt. Now we have the correct BIOS. So we'll swing on over to that and click enter. 
Hopefully this one works. Yes, there we go. So it's asking us again if we are sure we want to update our BIOS. And while this is happening, it's important that you do not touch anything. Powering this off while the BIOS is being updated can brick. In fact, it likely will brick your BIOS chip. And if it's the only one you have, again, you're gonna have a totally dead motherboard. It won't function without a working BIOS chip. So let this play out. Don't update your BIOS during a thunderstorm especially, and you should be okay after a few minutes of this updating. And now we're back at the startup page. So what I wanna do is power the system back off again and insert those two DIMMs back into the same two slots we had the first time when the system refused to post. I just wanna see if that alone, just the BIOS update, has changed anything about the stability of the system. So in you go, nice and easy. Take care of one side and the other. And now I'm just gonna have the camera focus on these four LEDs here. This will tell us right away if we still have the DRAM issue. I'm going to power the system back on at the power supply and we'll jump the two power pins and right away. Yeah, right away, DRAM LED. Oh, oh, no, no longer. Oh, wow, a quick boot. <laughs> Look at that. I was I was about to toss in the towel. I mean, there's not much more we can do beyond update the BIOS. There's nothing really at a hardware level I can do with these boards unless it's very obvious, but uh, that's fantastic. This is a post. You can see our BIOS version is 4403, so that checks out. Everything seems to be running just fine here. We could enable DOCP and just kind of tinker with the uh, RAM frequencies a bit. I do want to try, just to be on the safe side, a few other odd memory configs, uh, just, you know, unorthodox memory slotting, just to see uh, if this is a fluke or not. Now I'm trying the innermost two slots, which I know is a bit cringe. You're not really supposed to do this, but look at there, we've got a boot. That is good news. Um, again, don't do not do that, but it works. So now let's try maybe the outermost two dim slots. And would you look at that? Still works. That is, uh, that's awesome. You can see slots A1 and A2 there, which for whatever reason are the two outermost dims. You would think just, you know, intuitively left to right A to B, but it's actually B to A, yeah. Kind of strange. But anyway, uh, it works now and that's fantastic. So now I'm gonna move this module back, uh, the, the one that's in the third slot to the second slot uh, so that slots uh, B2 and A2 are populated. And we can pretty much call this one. I'm not expecting there to be any other inherent issues. I suppose we can try enabling DOCP just to see if the system is still stable. And, uh, and then that's it. I, I think you guys called it right out of the gate. This looks like it just came down to a BIOS update issue. Yes, with DOCP enabled, we're at 3200 megahertz, I believe, which is just what these are rated for. Uh, and optimal timings, we're back in the BIOS. Now we could run some longer term stability tests to, with these to make sure that these frequencies stick, uh, but we're already much further along than we were before. And I imagine if there were any serious issues, the system would just continue power cycling until the BIOS was reset to defaults, which is usually what happens when you have a bad overclock of some sort. Uh, so this, this, is, this is great. Best case scenario, there's actually nothing physically wrong with the board. It came down to a BIOS issue, uh, just needed a BIOS update. That was literally it. And the reason as to why the board might have been working just fine uh, and then all of a sudden stopped working with that particular RAM config on the old BIOS um, is probably just because, you know, over time, tech likes to, I mean, it, it just degrades, right? Very slowly, uh, but the more that it's stressed, uh, it just doesn't have the same kind of tolerances for higher frequency kits for certain arrangements of memory. And I, I think that's all it came down to. I don't think that the BIOS itself really changed at all. Uh, just sometimes hardware tolerances over time become a bit tighter. And so the need to update the Agesa, right, or to, to update your, your BIOS, which has the Agesa update built into it, uh, becomes rather warranted. So uh, thanks again to those who said this. I, I will try my best going forward to remember to address the BIOS, especially when it comes to memory issues in the future. It's one of those things, again, I, I tend to overlook just because it's, it's a software thing, not a hardware thing. And I'm always thinking about hardware, and that's something I need to improve on personally when I go about troubleshooting these. But uh, I, I'm super happy with this. This couldn't have ended any better. So if you ever run into the case where sometimes memory works in certain slots and sometimes it doesn't, the inconsistencies we were seeing in the Fixer Fault episode, we will have linked in the description if you haven't seen that yet. Uh, I suggest 
at least checking your BIOS version. If it's an older version, you haven't touched it maybe a year or two, it might be worth updating. That could very well be the reason why your system isn't turning on or isn't posting way that it should. This was definitely a learning experience for me and hopefully it was for some of you at least. I'm sure some of you are gonna be looking at this like, Greg, how did you not know that this was a BIOS problem? And yes, that's totally on me. As someone who uh, claims to be well-versed in troubleshooting PC hardware, uh, I totally overlooked a pretty pertinent software aspect of this and I will again try my best to not make that mistake going forward. If all I had done was update this viewer's BIOS, I wouldn't have had to have swapped his board for one of my working ones. That ultimately ended up fixing the problem because again, it, different board, different BIOS version, different Agesa update, it just happened to work, uh, but that wasn't really the correct solution. The, the best solution when, when troubleshooting stuff like this is the one that, that requires the least amount of labor input and the least amount of money, right, the, for the parts that you replace, etc. We wouldn't have had to replace any part by updating the BIOS. It's free. You can download them from vendor websites. And again, I will try my best to remember this moving forward. With that, uh, if you enjoyed this video, maybe learned something, give this one a thumbs up. That would be greatly appreciated. Consider subscribing if you have not already. And I will catch you in the next one. My name is Greg. Thanks for learning with me. And boy, I definitely learned something in this one.